So um, now we're getting into this real link here. So you've got your APC, say you've got a dendritic cell, you know, we've had this inflammatory response. We've got an antigen, we're putting it on our MHC2 and we're now going to go all the way to a lymph node. So it might be in like your um, neck, maybe in your armpit, wherever. Um, but we go to a lymph node and this is where we're going to interact with a lot of our lymphocytes. So our T cells, our B cells, all that stuff hanging around there. So once we've got our T cells, again, we're, get, we're getting higher up here in our hierarchy of immune cells. Um, we need basically a more effective system to kick in. So what your adaptive T cells or sorry, your adaptive cells in general will do is they are very specific. So that's why we've got an antigen. Um, before we had, you know, our little one size fits all, we don't care if it's a bacteria, if it's a virus, if it's whatever. Now we've phagocytosed this, um, pathogen and we are finding its specific antigen. Remember an antigen is like a name tag. So now we're saying, okay, this is the salmonella, um, bacteria, you know, this is E. coli, this is, you know, strep, whatever it is. And we're giving this name tag and we're showing this name tag to the T helper cell. And the, you know, macrophage or the dendritic cell is saying, you know, the innate cells, we've tried our best, but we need something more targeted here. That's the sort of idea that we're going with. Um, so you can see that here. You don't need to worry about the co-stimulatory ligand. This is what you're really thinking about. So we've phagocytosed to this. We've taken some of this antigen, put it on our MHC class 2, and now we're presenting it to the T helper cell. And this T helper cell is specific to this antigen. So this is another thing as well. We're not presenting this to any random T helper cell that we bump into. We're presenting, let's say this is for like E. coli or something like that. We're presenting this to a T helper cell that is specific for E. coli. So this macrophage will be in a lymph node and it'll take it to a billion different T cells. It'll take it to the COVID T cell. It'll take it to the chickenpox T cell. It'll take it to the, I don't know, like, tetanus T cell, like whatever, it'll take it to all these different T cells. But remember the whole theme of bio complementary. we're thinking of receptors. So we're finding a T cell that has a receptor that is complementary to this specific antigen. That is a really, really important thing to understand. Okay. So these are all our main players in our adaptive immunity. So don't really worry about like naive and stuff like that, but, um, you've got your B cell. So again, B cell, will have sort of a similar receptor like this. It's to a specific antigen. If it's naive, it means like it hasn't come across it yet. So in our bodies, like in 2018, we had our little B cells, or oh, maybe B cells are bad for COVID, but like, let's, let's just say, for example, right? It may not be accurate, um, but we've got our little B cell that's hanging around that's specific to COVID or whatever other infection. Um, that would be naive because it hasn't come across its antigen yet. Then COVID came into our body and this B cell was saying, woohoo, I found my complementary sort of antigen. So that's the idea of when they become like a mature B cell or an activated B cell. Um, plasma cells and memory B cells fall under this division of B cells. Um, I think I'll probably explain it in a diagram, but this is a good table to refer to. Plasma cells associate with your antibodies. Memory B cell, you just associate it with being your memory. So they just kind of hang around and they're good for next infections. Um, helper T cell, like super important, basically your coordinator of the whole adaptive immune response. They activate B cells, they activate other helper T cells and they activate your cytotoxic T cells. Your cytotoxic T cells, remember I said, were a little bit similar to your natural killer cells. They also use perforins and granzymes to induce apoptosis in infected cells. But instead of detecting when the windows are down, remember that this is part of the specific immune system. So they detect when the specific antigen is being presented on the MHC1. So they're looking in the window and they're not only looking in the window and saying, oh, there's an invader. They're looking in the window and saying, this is the invader's first name, their last name, their date of birth, all that stuff. They're being really specific. Um, okay, so this is a nice diagram that sort of encapsulates this. So this is our link from our innate immunity. So we've got our antigen presenting cell here. Um, we've got our antigen. B cells can also be antigen presenting cells. We just don't really like, like VK doesn't really use it in this context very much, but they can't be. Um, so whatever the case is, often it's an APC, they present our antigen. This T helper cell will now be activated. And what it'll do is it'll make more T helper cells. It'll um, 
what we call clonal expansion is an important thing to understand for all of these. So remember that all of these have a really specific um, receptor, right? So there's not a lot of them. Like, let's think about the COVID one, right? Before COVID came along, it's not really being used that much. Um, so it would be useless for you to have like a thousand of these cells, right? So you may have a couple, but once it's been activated, once this T helper cell specific to COVID, you know, in 2019 or 2020, came into contact with this virus, it obviously needs a bit more help, right? So it will go through this thing called clonal expansion. It will basically just replicate and replicate and replicate. So now we have a lot of T helper cells specific to this COVID antigen. That will then activate your cytotoxic T cells, which is what we've got here. This will also activate your B cells. Um, and the same thing will happen. Clonal expansion, you'll get heaps and heaps and heaps of these cells. So B cells will go into your plasma cells and your memory B cells. So the role of your plasma cells is just to make antibodies. And again, you've guessed it, your antibodies have those specific receptors to that specific antigen. Um, so these are really good for like bacteria and targeting sort of extracellular pathogens. Your cytotoxic T cells, you know, we talked about like the windows, they're really good for um, intracellular pathogens and like your cancers and stuff like that. So that's the idea there. Um, okay, so summarizing this, so we've got a lymph node, our T helper cell is activated. This is going to say, okay, let me find a B cell that has the exact same receptor. I found it, now you're activated. Now this B cell, it's been switched on, it's going to divide and it's going to create so many more B cells and they're going to be both memory B cells and your plasma cells. So remember your plasma cells work to produce your antibodies and those will help kill your bacteria. Your memory B cells, they just their role is basically just to hang around. Um, and then once this infection is over, the next time that we get infected with COVID, let's say, we've got a lot of memory B cells hanging around. It's their job to divide into more B cells, basically. Um, okay, so yeah, plasma B cells, antibodies. That's the idea there. Um, so this is ultimately what we can see in terms of our sort of initial infection. And this is your um, your like antigen presenting cells. You've got your T cells and your B cells being activated. You've got your plasma cells and your B cells. And then your plasma cells producing your antibodies, which look like these little Ys. Okay, I am mindful of time, so I'll keep kind of going through it. Um, so T cell responses um, are targeted towards our intracellular pathogens. So again, think of our viruses, our cancers, stuff like that. So you've got your, your outer lymph node, your APCs come along, T helper cells activated. That activates itself really, and it divides, and it creates your memory T cells and your T helper cells. Memory T cells, exactly the same. I will say Vika always talks about memory B cells. They never really talk about memory T cells, um, but it's just they have the same job. Um, and then your cytotoxic T cells will obviously proliferate as well. So here is how cytotoxic T cells work. Again, instead of um, your natural killer cells detecting when MHC1 is not there, what they do is cytotoxic T cells go and they zoom in on your MHC1 and they will see that if there are any basically non-self antigens being presented on the MHC1, and then they will release perforins and granzymes and kill it. So if you've got a virus, your window is open, you're showing your viral particles um, or peptides on your MHC1, your cytotoxic T cell is going to come along. And remember, I can't emphasize it enough. It's all about being complementary, having the same receptor. So this cytotoxic T cell comes along and its receptor, whatever the shape is, fits really well over this um, viral antigen. So this is sitting in your MHC1. This is your cytotoxic T cells receptor. It's going to come along and go, ah, ha, ha, this is the COVID, um, you know, SARS-CoV-2, like whatever. This is the exact specific antigen that I'm looking for. I'm now going to release perforins and granzymes and I'm going to like destroy this house. Basically, I'm going to kill this cell and kill the virus in it. So that is the idea there. Um, okay, so allergens are similar to pathogens in an allergic response, but obviously it's this idea of people with allergies and our response to allergens, um, it's a hypersensitivity. So, you know, you've got things like pollen, dust, peanuts. 
compared to, you know, if you think about a virus or a bacteria, they can cause a lot of damage, they can kill you, right? So it's valid that the immune system wants to mount a response against them. With allergens, our immune system is basically very hyperactive and it sees these pollen, these dust, this peanut, which doesn't cause, it isn't a source of a threat for us, but for some reason it sees it as a threat and then it basically initiates an immune response. So a lot of this stuff is quite similar, but it's a thing that you have to realize with um, the allergic response is that you have this sort of priming. So what happens is if we've got someone that's allergic to pollen, so the first time pollen is going to enter their body um, and we've got our immune system kicking in. So, you know, the same thing that happened with our clonal expansion, all that sort of stuff will be specific to pollen. And we're going to make antibodies to the pollen, right? Because we think it's dangerous. But something that we do is that with these antibodies, we don't really use it to like kill it, I suppose. Um, what we do is we take these antibodies, so there are a specific form of antibodies, IgE, and we sit them on mast cells. So that's obviously a bit different to what you do, like if it's a bacteria. Um, so you, again, this is your, so the first time your body has ever come into contact with pollen, we mount an immune response, specific antibodies are formed, these antibodies go and sit on our mast cells, and that's that. The person doesn't get sick, nothing happens. The second time pollen comes in, that's when we get this full-blown response. So the second time your pollen comes in, and this is this idea of like sort of priming, your IgE, so your antibodies, are sitting on your mast cells and they're, they're just waiting. And so as that pollen comes in, what it does is it binds to that IgE and that causes a really huge response in your mast cells and histamine is released and then you have this big inflammatory response. And that's why people with allergies, you know, have inflammation. They've got their, like, they get red, um, you know, throat closes up, snotty, that sort of thing. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. And that's kind of what I was talking about in terms of hypersensitivity. But yeah, the main thing to realize is that we've got our, our first exposure, like nothing happens to the outside. You don't have that allergic response, um, but your mast cells are just covered in this IgE. And then the second time it binds to the IgE and then it causes that response. Um, okay, I'm going to probably race through this question. Um, so cells of the immune system have different kinds of structures on the surfaces. So you've got self antigens, receptors, for self antigens and then receptors for foreign antigens. So hopefully that makes sense. So you've got a self antigen. So you can see that they've, they've all got three things. So you've got a self antigen, you've got a receptor for self antigens, and you've got a receptor for foreign antigens. So from the information, what are we able to conclude? Um, again, if you want, you can take like a screenshot of it and have time to think about it yourself and stuff like that, but I will move through it. If you want to go back to it on the slides, then I recommend that you do. Um, the way that you can look at this is if you realize that you've got a self antigen, a receptor for the self antigen, um, and for, and a receptor for a foreign antigen, you can basically figure out which one is which on each of these, because two of them will be complementary because you have a self antigen and a receptor for a self antigen. So they must be complementary, right? And then the third one should be a random receptor for foreign antigens. So. What the question is asking you is what is a self antigen for each of these cells? So if we go to cell P, this fits into that. So this must be the receptor and the self antigen. So this will be the foreign one. So therefore A can't be right. B, so cell R, so this fits into this. So this must be your self antigen and your receptor. This is your foreign one. Oh yep, yeah, that's looking pretty right. Let's check the others uh cell q so this fits into this this must be your self antigen this must be your receptor this is your foreign one um which is not right here and then lastly this fits into this so this must be the receptor and the self antigen this must be the foreign one which again is incorrect so the only one that's right is b i hope that made sense feel free to leave a comment in the chat if that didn't work i know i went through that quite quickly um but again take time to go back to it using the slides if you want. Sorry, I just know we have a lot.